This is Dr. Smith. I wanted to take a moment to give you an overview of what I discussed with the Quality Circle team yesterday concerning an alternate assignment to your final exam. In times past, when this course was offered in the third semester, this was a required assignment for students. However, this semester I opted not to give it to you because I realized that you all would have uh, different work schedules and oftentimes finding time to do a group project might be difficult. However, I think that some of you might rather do this than to uh, actually take a final exam. And so the option is totally yours. There is no um, benefit to your grade one way or the other. This assignment counts the, the exact amount as your final exam. Now it does require that you work in a group of five. And five is that magic number so if you only have four you need to recruit one more person for your group. However, if you don't already have a group that you would be interested in working with, you can still sign up and then I will pair you with people in the end. And so um, I'm trying to make sure you have all the information so you can be completely informed and make the decision that's best for you. Now here I have these folders um, in the Moodle course and right now they're hidden from you but I will um, unlock them so that you can see them and this will give you a better uh, understanding of what this project entails. Now what this is is the um, learning plans and what they are is a group of four different scenarios. You will be given one of these as a group and let's just look at the first one. In this first scenario you see there's student one, two, three and then you know the other two students in the group can serve as like the camera people or however you decide to do it. But what you first have to do is write a paper and I'm talking somewhere in the neighborhood of three pages definitely no more than five and you have to come up with a solution to the problem. And in this first scenario, you see that there's a graduate, a new nurse who just graduated from nursing school working on a unit, and she has to call a doctor because she's concerned about significant changes in the vital signs of a patient for which she's caring. So, but the, the problem is that Dr. Jones is a Scrooge and he doesn't like to be awakened at night, and so this poor nurse is afraid to call him. So now you have to decide as a group. How are we going to handle this situation? Realizing that we have to be patient advocates, how are you going to get Dr. Scrooge to the unit? This will help you practice how to communicate with physicians effectively so that you don't seem like the nurse who's just trying to wake him up, but the nurse who's really concerned about her patients. Now, if you look over in this little column that says general objectives, there are some clues to what you should do. Your textbook goes into a lot of details, but I also um, put them here to kind of guide your thought process. So one of the first objectives you see here is to identify threats to patient safety. So can you read the scenario and see that your patient is in danger? The second thing is remove or lessen the threat to the patient. How can you get this patient out of harm's way? and then implement patient safety strategies. So how can you communicate effectively and get this patient what he or she needs? Or, and how can you build relationships with people such that um, the help you need for your patient arrives quickly to the unit to lessen or prevent harm to your patient? And take a look at these other two scenarios, other three, excuse me, scenarios. Uh, there's one on, the first one was patient safety, then there's problem solving, conflict resolution, and delegation. And these are all topics that are discussed in this course, and so you should feel somewhat comfortable with them. Okay, so the second thing I want you to see in this is the actual rubric that goes with this assignment. And this is, this is not the one I want to show you. Give me a second. Because as I said, the first part you're doing is the actual paper. And this is the rubric for the paper. It tells you about the assignment and that you should 
write this paper and together you can do it by you can decide well I'll write the first part and then you write the second part or we all get together and kind of summarize how you want to do it one person write it the main thing is that you know that everybody would be responsible for it okay and this gives you an example this is a description of that part of the paper that scenario overview. This should be written to an audience who is not aware of the situation with which you're dealing. So in other words, you're giving a very brief summary of what I wrote in the patient safety scenario. For in other words, you might say, I am this this case is about a nurse working on a unit who has to call a doctor who doesn't like to be called in the middle of the night and the nurses have to make a decision about whether or not to call the doctor and how to avoid harm to the patient and then you might say or you could even start out by saying that patient safety is very important in nursing care today and cite something in other words make it um, so that somebody who hasn't read your scenario will understand what's happening without every word being written there all right and then implications for nursing why is it important that you deal with this situation and how might it impact patient care so in other words you might talk about what happens if you don't call the doctor well of course your patient's going to be harmed what happens if you do call the doctor how do you form a relationship where it becomes collaboration and he doesn't feel like you're bugging him so all those um things would come into play and then related theory you can use your textbook ATI book any kind of article um, that you find a lot of people have found very good um, patient safety articles in nursing journals so anything like that will be fine and then resolu resolution you should describe how you will end this scenario and so in other words you're going to say um, we're going to call the doctor if I if I have a problem I'll you know what resources would you use if he still doesn't want to come and that type thing and that and then of course APA format that's 10 po points of the paper and so this gives you a step-by-step -step guide in building that paper okay the next part of the assignment is to actually um, write the paper and I have an exemplar here for you this is one that students did a really good job on now this paper was nine pages granted back then that was kind of a requirement for them but and and you'll also note that this person this group had to present all of the possible scenarios so you only need to pick one and, and preferably the one that's the right ending um, that will result in a good relationship with the physician and your patient being safe okay and then you cite your references there's no certain amount of references that you need to write but I just wanted you to see how one group had done their paper okay so now back to the course oh the last part I'm sorry so you have to at that point you would have to do a video Let's see, that's this one. And this is what you need to include in the video. Okay, so this is what I'm asking myself when I watch your video. Did the team state the learning objectives before playing the recorded scenario? So, did you tell the learner what they should expect to get out of your video? Did the team clarify, identif clearly identify threats to the patient? So, is you know in the scenario what's wrong why your patient is in danger and then uh, did the team member act quickly to remove or lessen the safety threat again here these questions guide you in things that you should address did the team member communicate with dr. Jones using s bar communication so you see right there you should use s bar when you contact your doctor and what do you think the team did really well and and I'll give you that feedback as to what I think you really did well and then where you have opportunity for growth in future projects of this nature okay so now why am I offering you this assignment there's a theory about experiential learning by a guy named Kolb K-O-L-B and he says that if you actually go through these steps and do these things you actually practice calling the doctor that when you get in that situation to do it you're actually a lot more 
comfortable doing it and you're also competent doing it. So these are three examples that lead to um, integrity lectures that other students did. There's no right way or wrong way to do the video as long as the content is covered. If you, I've seen students do puppet shows, I've seen students record with their iPhones. The main thing is that I can see that you're acting out these parts and you understand the steps you should take. Let me see if I, I they won't play for me here, but I'm sure they'll play for you from integrity because I think they won't play for me because I am integrity recording for you so but anyway you'll be able to see these three examples here's a patient safety one a problem solving and delegation okay so the next step I'm going to move this over to the new screen after you have had a chance to fully examine the simulation assignment you make a decision whether or not you want to participate in that. So, what you would do is you'll go to the survey, you'll get the link in your email, and you notice it says here, Dear Nursing 376 student, please watch the Tegrity Lecture titled Simulated Video Experience and then complete the survey below. Because if you're doing this before you've watched or heard what I had to say, you really won't understand what your true options are. You can just click down and drop um, and pick your name they're in alphabetical order by your last name or you can begin to type and your name will come up that way okay so let's just say I'm Sharnith Bulware and, in, and say I would like to do the simulated video experience instead of take a final exam so if you say yes let's just say this sounds like a great idea I want to do it so the next question will come up. I have a group with whom I'd like to work. And again, I remind you that a group consists of yourself and four other people. So let's just say yes. Then here comes a, a box. The following people are in my group. So Shannon Smith, uh, Gina Matthews, uh, Sylvia Brown, and Sherry Green. So these people are in my lit in my box in in my group, excuse me, and I hit submit and that's done. And it'll say thank you for completing the survey. Have a nice day. And that automatically sends a message to me and then I'll communicate with your group about the assignment. Now, I want to do the survey again cuz I need to show you a different option. Of what it'll look like for you. Okay, so this time let's just pretend that you pick your name, Christy, and you don't want to participate in the simulated video, but instead you'd rather take the final exam. So you will answer no to the question. I am available to take the final exam on Wednesday, November 18th. Let's just say no, you're not. Here you can put in an alternate date that I will try to accommodate. And um, if we're not able to accommodate that date, I will contact you individually. Let's just say my answer is yes. Oh, that's a great date. I can take that. I'm done with the course. See ya. You hit submit, and I'll get that information as well. And that's all you have to do. So thank you for your time and the survey will remain open for one week so I'm asking everybody to please go in and fill out that survey so that I know what you would like to do take care